right now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this session with Karen Dean, who is the Education and Outreach Coordinator for Reliant Credit Union. If you are getting close to retirement, or maybe you're not that close, but you want to be well prepared, you're in the right place. Karen's going to give us some helpful information, so we'll be solvent when it comes time for us to uh, finally retire and live it up. Right. <laughs> So, all right. Well, welcome everyone. And um, again, you know, this is um, a presentation in reference to retirement. And um, so a little bit of background, just a, a lot of things in reference to retirement, but most people plan on saving um, or don't want to save for retirement. Sometimes it's difficult to know when to start and what your options are. So just kind of gives you a little bit of background, a couple different ideas of, you know, um, how to get there, because we all want to retire someday. So research so shows that most families do not have enough money set aside for retirement, including those approaching the retirement age. If you are start, if you started saving for retirement, that's great. This workshop can help you determine which is what else you may need to do to make sure you can reach your invest retirement savings goal. Beginning with savings, it's important. Making sure you know how much to save is important too. We'll address what topics is in, um, in this workshop as well. So when we create financial plans, we often assume everyone will go exactly as expected. Well, it's possible that it will, but more than often not. It doesn't, life is full of surprises both good and bad, and it's impossible to predict exactly how things will turn out. The good news is that you don't need a crystal ball to plan your financial future. So in this workshop, we'll cover some of the tools and techniques you can use to prepare yourself for unexpected financial events, including financial emergencies. We'll also talk about um, limiting the negative impact that you're already dealing with with financial emergencies or facing a time of financial uncertainty. So let's look at the agenda for the workshop and learn about some of the topics we'll cover. Okay, so in this workshop, oh, change, there we go. We're gonna to examine some of the factors you should consider when planning for retirement. Learn how to examine your retirement expenses Identify the savings and planning strategies that allow you to maximize your saving at any age. Compare the types of retirement plan available to you and set goals for your own retirement savings. Okay. So um, we don't have a big, a big um, audience today, but we're just thinking about the idea, just thinking about um, different responses um, to a few of the questions here. Um, have you ever, have you started saving for retirement? Have you thought about a retirement plan? Have you already enrolled in your retirement savings plan, either through your employer or on your own? Do you know what's your retirement, what's in your retirement accounts? So saving for the future is easy to put off in favor of other more immediate ex um, spending needs. The results of postponing it, although it may, many people don't have enough money saved for financial security and stability, they need more time um, when it comes to retirement. Whether you're um, in your retirement plan, it's not too late to develop or refine your saving strategy. When considering retirement, there are more factors to keep in mind than deciding how much to save. So what factors will you need to consider for your retirement savings? So some of the things you need to think about is, you know, the, you know, your income. How much can I, can be saved depends on your current income. Your current income includes everything you earn from salary, tips, welfare, uh, benefits, and services. You have to think about your expenses. Think about what kind of lifestyle you wanna have when you grow older. Remember, you won't be working anymore 
but you'll still have to pay for those expenses. Think about the current expenses as well. It will help you plan for savings goal, make a budget so that you can better understand how and where you're spending your income. Then see if you can cut back on these spending and move that money into savings instead. So you can plan for a budget. You can see um, in the budget planner in your participant guides. Um, we're not gonna fill that out today, but you can, um, you can use it um, when you're ready to make your retirement plan. Make sure you have all the paperwork, such as your bills, your W-2s and so on, so you can fill out it accurately as possible. Other things to consider is your health. As more and more Americans are living longer, it's important to consider medical costs. They can include costs of prescription drugs, emergency care, surgeries, and insurance, as well as taxes. Even in retirement, you can still be taxed. Income earned from retirement investments may put you in a higher tax bracket and any earnings may be taxed. There's also some factors to consider, such as the internet interest rates on savings, um, earnings on investments and inflations that you'll also have to consider. So we all know what inflation is, especially right now, we all have seen just in the past few months, how much, you know, the what inflation has done. But inflation is the rate at which the price of goods and services increase while the purchasing power of currency fails. Inflation is difficult to predict, but increases Increases in inflation will generally decrease the value of what you have saved for retirement. So make sure you're accounting for inflation in your retirement plan. Some people look forward to retirement and enjoying the things that didn't have time to do when they were working, but retirement is also a time when you no longer have, earning, have earned income. So it's important to set aside retirement savings goals. Let's find out more about retirement savings goals. So Vicki, if you ever have any questions, some of the things I will be able to help you with, but sometimes I don't know where some people want to share. So feel free if, you're, if you have any questions. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so we're gonna look at, um, to have financial security when you're no longer working, you need to develop and implement a retirement saving plan as early as possible. Here's some questions to ask yourself when developing a retirement plan. When do I expect to retire? How long do you want to, your retirement to last? What is your income? And how much should I save each year? A good retirement plan also allows you to plan for unforeseen expenses, deal with changes in living situations or a health and remain independent in your uh, later years. One of the important factors you need to figure out is how much money you'll need during these retirement years. Start by determining how long you're likely to be, how likely, how long you're likely retired. This estimate requires thinking about when you'll likely retire and your life expectancy. You may think about how long a family member typically live, use our national average, currently about 85 years old, or play it safe and estimate at a higher side, say 100. These numbers are just an estimate, but a good place to start planning. The next step you'd have to do is figure out how much money you'll need each year to live securely. Everyone is different but you may have a rule of thumb is to aim for at least 70% of your current income available to you each year of retirement. For example, if you make $30,000, you should try to have at least 21,000 available during retirement. Now that we put these steps to, we're gonna put these steps to work. Let's go to your participant guide and fill out the setting your goals worksheet on page four. The next step is pretty straightforward multiplication exercise. Multiply the number of years expected in retirement by the estimated annual retirement savings 
to get the amount you need to save by the time you retire. Although the exact amount you will need will be affected by the, the number of life factors that, calcul that calculation gives you is a baseline total that you'll need to save for retirement. So you can adjust your retirement savings goal amount or increase your monthly savings to reach your goal. But money isn't the only factor to consider. You should also consider the time of your retirement. When you're planning for retirement, one of the most important elements is understanding is time. So what are some of the reasons people want to start early, saving early in life? Some responses usually are saving was encouraged by their parents. They enrolled in their company retirement program early in their career. They understood the value of starting early. And then some of the other questions may be, some reasons will be they don't know how to start savings. They don't think they, they think they can't afford to set money aside for retirement. They are not offered a retirement plan option through work or they choose to spend their money on other things as well as they don't know the value of starting early. I really enjoy teaching this class when I go into a, um, the high school and really push the idea of starting early, um, that, um, that initial push. So how can people catch up if they haven't, if they need, if they start saving later in life? So some ideas would be save more and try to increase their income to have more to set aside. So here's a little example. Let's say, um, let's begin looking at an example of one person's goal is to retire at the age of 67 with at least $600,000. So for instance, if this person's goal was to retire at the age of 67 with, with at least 600,000 saved, they will need to save much less money as they started saving when they're 18 years old versus when they're 50 years old. Without factoring the impact that compound interest would have on retirement saving at the age of 18, would need to save approximately $12,245 every year to meet that goal. However, if this person waited until the age of 50 years old to begin saving for retirement, this number would increase to $35,294 annually. The key thing to remember here is that the earlier you begin to save for retirement, the less you will need to save each year. So your financial institution, uh, situation influences when you start saving and how much you can save. So we're going to take a, a little bit closer look at this. Oops, here. The earlier you start saving and investing, the greater the power of compounding interest will be for your financial future and the more money you will be able to save for your retirement. Compound interest is basically earning interest on interest rather than just earning interest on the amount of money you save or the principal amount. Compounding interest is interest earned on princ the principal amount plus the amount of accumulated interest. The more frequently interest compounds, the greater the amount of compounded interest and the greater your retirement savings. It is likely your money is doing the work for you. Let's take a look, closer look at compound interest. So we'll use the same example, um, saving for retirement at 18 instead of 50. We will assume that you still have the goal of retirement of $600,000 at the age of 67. However, in this, in this example, a 401k account you will be using to save for retirement averages a return of 6%. By factoring in compound interest, the amount you would need to save each year decreases dramatically. That's because you're earning interest on principal amount and then earning interest on the increased number. In an account with 6% return, 
an 18 year old would need to save $2,198.14 per year for 49 years rather than the $12,245 without compounded interest. While a 50 year old would need to save $21,266.88 rather than the $35,294 without the compounded interest for only 17 years. You can adjust your goals or use the power of time and interest to reach your savings goal. So let's look at a scenario, scenario that will help us understand how compound interest works over time. So in this activity, we will think about how compound interest works. So Joan is gonna invest $100 into retirement account. Since then, she contributed $50 per month to an account that earns 10% interest, which compounds annually. This chart best describes how much money, um, how much of her money will grow over 40 years. So you can see the difference on chart A, the difference between chart A and B of how much the savings is. To get a better look at the chart, go to it's on page five of your participant guide to the work she called Jones Retirement Plan. Um, Examine each graph, decide which one accurately shows how much Joan will earn in 40 years. Notice the amount difference with each chart. With chart A, A going up to 300,000 and chart B goes up only 30,000. Now that you know how to use time and interest to your advantage, Let's figure out where your retirement income may come from. Retirement income could come from a variety of sources. Many options are available to you, especially if you plan ahead and choose to make them most available for you. What types of accounts could retirement income, income come from? A lot of responses would be savings account, certificates of deposit, Social Security, 401ks, 4013bs, IRAs, Roth IRAs, and a simplified employee pension. Your retirement income can come from any of these sources. So let's take a deeper look at each one of them. So most of your, oops, I gotta switch, sorry. So most of your retirement income will likely come from your personal savings retirement plan that you re re enrolled in, social security, investments, and other sources. So each one of them, starting with the personal savings, if you aren't able to already have a savings, now is a good time to start. Many savings vehicles are available to you. As you've learned, the power of interest and compounding interest over time means that saving even a small amount of today can have a positive effect in the future of your financial health. Employer um, sponsored retirement plans. You may already be enrolled in a retirement plan such as a 401k through your job. If your employer offers a plan that you have not signed up for, you may want to read on with the employer what the plan offers and decide if it's a good fit for you. A perk of the employer-sponsored plan is an employer matching program. Employer matching your 401k means that your employer contributes a certain amount of retirement savings but, um, based on the amount of your annual contribution. Typically, employers match a percentage of the employee's contribution up to a certain portion of your total salary. If you don't have access to a retirement plan through your job, don't worry. There's, um, we'll take an, a closer look at a different retirement plan option available for you in the next section. Social Security Administration is a government agency that helps older and disabled Americans and families. Social Security benefits are one of the most important sources of retirement income for many people. 
The amount you received is based on your lifetime earnings. For people with an average income, Social Security replaces about 40% of their income. You can collect Social Security benefits as early as the age of 62. But if you want to wait longer, you can collect a larger amount per month. Another one, the next one is that investments. Just like savings account, investments also grow over time and add to your available income during retirement. Many people choose to invest in real estate, stocks, or bonds. Investment can be risky, but they can also be rewarding. We'll explore some of the ways to manage risks shortly. Some other sources, your retirement income can come from other places too, owning a home. Many provide a variety of ways to earn income, including renting and selling. You may also receive inheritance, gifts, or money from friends or family that can contribute to your retirement fund income. So now that you know who the re where your retirement income comes from, let's discuss how you can build and grow these sources. Savings is the most important, valuable financial habit. It's also one of the key to growing a stable source of retirement income. Many of you already have, um, may have savings habits and strategies. Ask yourself the following questions. What are your saving strategies? What are the hardest part about savings? How much risk are you willing to take with the money you save? Whether you're already saving or planning to start, it's always helpful to know the specifics of putting together an effective retirement plan. So I'm getting ahead of myself. Planning for retirement means you don't need to save as well as invest. First and foremost, saving for retirement involves putting aside money from your current, from your currently earned so that you can invest in. This means you need to budget your money so you can save a certain amount each month. It's very important to be able to have money set aside for emergencies, you know, before you start setting aside for retirement. Um, it's important to save every part, um, Part of every paycheck for retirement, but if that's not possible, put some money aside, um, maybe several times a year, whatever works for you. Once you have some money saved, you may decide to invest it. When you invest in things such as stocks, bonds, or real estate, you hope that you'll be worth more over time than when you paid for them. This type of investment may be risky because some assets may go down in value over time. Consider how much time you have and how much risk you're willing to take. A strategy many investors use is to spread out risk is called diversification. Diversification is like making sure you don't put all your eggs in one basket. It's important to keep in mind though that diversification doesn't eliminate the risk of losing money. Deciding how and where you invest your money is up to you, and we cannot tell you which choice is best for your particular situ situation. However, lots of options are avail available, and we'll explore some shortly. So if you look at your page six of the retirement plan, um, it will, we're going to, um, look at two strategies to plan for retirement. Read the two options, save and invest. Select, I plan to do this if you already have or invest, but you're planning on doing some future. Select, I already do this if your actions have already been taken. It's always a good idea to plan ahead and think about the future. Let's look at some of the most common types of retirement plans. There are several different types of plans, all which are designed to help you accomplish your long-term savings goals. Retirement accounts allow you to save money, cash or investments, invest in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and other investment vehicles. 
Let's look at a few, few different types. Keep in mind when you're already started planning, you'll benefit from doing some more in-depth research to find the plan that best meets your needs. On page seven, all these will be listed um, with the description of each one of them. So that employer-based retirement plan, many employers offer a tax-deferred retirement plan such as a 401k or 403b, which allows participants to make pre-tax contributions to invest um, an investment account. The earnings on the investment grow tax-deferred. And if you leave that job, your contributions and earnings are yours to keep. Every employer sponsored plan is different. So research the rules and options available to you. The 401k um, is a retirement savings plan that allows that offered by your employer with this plan, you decide how much money you want taken out of your wages and investment. The money invested is tax free, but any amount you withdraw in retirement is taxable. It's important to remember that early withdrawals are not only taxable, but in most cases they incur um, other factors. The most well-known and variable feature is a 401k is some employers may choose to make the matching contribution. That means if you contribute 3% of your salary, for example, the employer may add an additional 3%, bringing you total contribution a uh, contribution of 6% of your salary per year. Therefore, the the, it's a benefit to match your employer's contribution. Many empl employers require you to work at the company for a certain amount of time before they can, you can keep all the matching contributions if you switch job. This is called vesting. Any employer contributions that are vested are yours to keep. I always think of that as a benefit. If you're looking for a job and a job A is not offering a match program, for the, the benefit of some of the other, the salary may be the same. Thinking about that 3% is additional 3% that they're giving you to be able to you know, um, put aside for retirement. The 403B, um, this is a type of retirement fund offered by people who work in tax exempt organizations such as schools, religious institutions, or non for profits. It's very similar to the 401k. It generally tends to have fewer administrative costs for employers and a shorter vesting schedule. Defined benefit plans or pensions. These plans are very uncommon nowadays. These plans are often referred to as pensions. We've um, provided workers with guaranteed benefits like monthly income upon retirement, typically calculated according to the years of service and earnings. Individual retirement plans, an IRA. If your company does not offer a plan or you're unemployed or self-employed, you can start your own individual retirement account or IRA. You also increase retirement savings by contributing to an IRA, as well as your employer-sponsored plan. These two main plans, IRAs, are traditional IRAs and Roth IRAs. With a traditional IRA, your contributions are not taxed until you withdraw the money with a Roth IRA. You contribute after tax income. So you may withdraw money tax-free at retirement. So traditional, you're putting the money in pre-tax, but you're gonna pay tax as you withdraw. And then the Roth, you're already taxed. So when you make that withdrawal, you, all that money is there. You're not gonna be taxed on it. And with age limits, you contribute to a traditional IRA plan until the age of 72 as long as you're earning taxable income. With a Roth IRA, there's no age limit and you can, can contribute as long as you're earning a taxable income below a certain limit. Make sure to research these limits um, because they change year to year. So the contribution limits for both traditional and Roth, you can contribute up to $6,000 per year if you are, are age 50 or older, you can contribute um, up to 7,000. They call that a catch-up option. 
uh, because at a, that age group didn't start as early as the age group that is starting to invest now. And any withdrawal penalties, both traditional and Roth IRA may have tax penalties for withdrawing early. However, there's exemptions. Um, so consult your financial advisor or expert before making any decisions. There are many options to choose from. Speak, um, speak with a financial advisor, accountant, or an attorney. Do more research, resource and consult your loved ones when making these decisions. Knowing your options is always a good place to start, but how do you choose from these different options? If you choose to uh, turn to page nine of the participant guide, some of the questions are choosing a retirement plan. What benefits um, you would, what, what benefits you is important as we go over the factors, consider and doing the following. Under each plan, you'll notice two options. Check I know this if you already know the answer. Check I need to learn more if you don't know um, something you don't know and you need to do research. So let's go over some of the factors that you may want to consider when comparing your um, comparing plan, the plans. Does my employer match my contribution? Are there fees associated with the plan? Can I withdraw early in case of an emergency? Are the withdrawal withdrawals taxed when I deposit or when I withdraw? Will I be in a higher or lower tax bracket at retirement? Am I saving myself or to leave for a legacy? The matching contributions. If you're able to enroll in that employer match retirement plan, such as a 401k, check to see if your employer will match the contributions when, you're, um, when the matching contribution will vest. Try to contribute enough to get full employer match. There may be several fees associated with different types of accounts. Withdrawal limits, sometimes you may want to withdraw money from a retirement account early. Check to see if there are any penalties associated with early withdrawals. Some plans such as a 4013B may allow you to withdraw money as a loan, but be careful though, research your options through before borrowing from a retirement plan. Remember that compounding interest, how that money will compound. We'll take an example of a $10,000 loan you need to be able to, um, we're gonna redo the roof on the home. If you actually look at the option that compounding interest at six to 10%, maybe you're making on that money, that you're not gonna be able to do for maybe you're gonna put out the loan for five to 10 years, you're losing that compounding interest on that $10,000. Versus if you took out say a home improvement loan, the interest rates are so low right now that it's to your benefit that you're making the payment over here and not using your money for return. Everyone thinks I'm not using this money until I turn 62, I have this money, I'm gonna use my money. But overall, you're not making, you could be making more money sitting in there than what you're gonna pay for um, a loan. Um, so there's no escaping tax on a retirement income. So think about it when it makes sense to pay tax now or when you withdraw the money. So some of the tax brackets, one way to think about making a decision about a tax status of your loan, such as um, deciding between a traditional Roth IRA is comparing your uh, current tax bracket with the tax bracket that's the rate you will be, you'll pay each portion of your income. You think you'll be doing, you think you'll be doing during retirement. If you expect to be at a lower tax bracket when you retire, you may choose the plan in which you pay tax on the money when you withdraw it. The reason is that when you withdraw it, it's you're in a lower tax bracket and you'll pay fewer taxes. Talks to talk to a tax professional or financial planner to find out which is the best decision for you. And then if we think of the plan purpose, most people set up a retirement plan to provide for their own future. 
However, many people also set up to provide for their spouse, children, grandchildren, or charity. Knowing the purpose of your plan can help you decide and one that which um, achieves your goal. Discuss your plan with your financial planner or estate attorney, as there may be unexpected tax consequences when your loved ones inherit in, um, a retirement account from you. Retirement plans and personal savings aren't only ways you save for your retirement income. Let's look at how investing outside retirement accounts can help you do that. So another way to plan for retirement is invest directly into the vehicle, such as stocks, bonds, and diversified combinations of several options. Let's look at stocks. You can own a part of any publicly traded company assets and earned by purchasing stock in that company. You may often hear people refer to a stock or share or equity. The price of the company stock may go up and down. Some stocks also may, be, um, may pay a dividend, which a payment of the company profit to the stockholder. You can keep your dividends as a source of income or reinvest dividends back into the purchase for more stocks. The difference of a bond. You may also, um, you can also lend money to corporations and government agency to earn a fixed rate of investment for a specific period of time. The borrower pays you interest on the principal, which in the amount of the original um, originally invested. Bond rates are tied to the interest rates. Bonds fall and in, as investments rise. You may earn a profit by selling the bond for a higher price than what you paid it. And then there's mutual funds that you can pool your money uh, with that of other investors by purchasing shares, mutual funds, which is made up of a number of assets, including stocks, bonds, real estate, and cash. They may vary in other ways too, such as the type of location of companies in which they invest. Actively managed mutual funds are overseen by a fund manager, while the index of funds are built to match um, the market index. So investing may seem a risky to many people, whether you want to do so depends on your ability to tolerate risk. Let's look at some of the strategies of the risk of investment. No matter how you invest, you need to understand to manage your risk. Often risk is tied to reward. The investment that you tend to have the highest returns also tend to have the, right, the, the highest level of risk. Consider stocks, for example. The value of a stock depends on many factors over which you have no control, such as the company, company news and performance, industry performance, economic factors such as inflation and interest rates. How much risk you decide to take may depend on many factors. How much risk are you comfortable taking with in general? How long, you how long do you have until retirement? If you have many years to retire, some experts su um, suggest considering more risk and investing in financial products such as stocks, bonds, mutual funds. Stocks are something considered riskier than bonds, but they have a potential to earn you more money over time. Likewise, if you, um, as you're getting older, you have less time until retirement, you may want to focus on the lower investments as a fixed income such as bonds. But either way, evaluating how much risk you're willing to take with your invest with your retirement savings is the important decision. So one way we can do um, manage some of these things is the risk of diversifying. Let's take a closer look at diversification. We talked about it earlier about why diversification is important to manage your risk. You can diversify by investing in different instruments or assets. Let's look at different options available. For any 
kind of retirement savings or investing, it's important to research all your options and speak with a professional who can help you understand the best way to invest your retirement savings in terms of diversification, risk level, and tax status. As you get closer to retirement, you may adjust your investments um, to a future managed risk. So low risk. With a low risk portfolio, you may face lower possibility for loss, but risks still exist. Lower possibility for return. The low risk portfolio may include more money in savings accounts than investments, more money in bonds than stocks. You may choose a low risk portfolio if you're less willing to accept risk or volatility. In a medium risk portfolio, um, you may face possibility for moderate returns, moderate possibility of loss, and you may choose a, me a medium risk portfolio if you are willing to able to accept some risk or volatility. Then there's the high risk. You may face possibility of a larger return, but also the larger possibility of a loss. You may choose a higher risk portfolio if you are willing and able to tolerate more risk or volatility. So when your asset, when your when you assess your retirement time horizon and tolerance for risk, for risk, invest accordingly to the low, medium, and high risk portfolio. Again, that's the diversification. You can put some in low, medium, and high, um, depending on where what's most comfortable for you. You don't have to keep them all in one basket. Um, you'll be able to be one step closer to that retirement saving goal. So having a plan to save for your retirement is an important step to take. Now look at how you can keep your plan on track. So do you agree with any of these statements? I will eat better after the holidays. I will wake up early and exercise tomorrow. I'll start saving when I get a raise. I'll go to bed early tomorrow. I'll stop and watch after this one episode. I'll borrow less on my credit cards next month. I'm sure somewhere along the way, we've all said one of these statements. Almost all of us thought or done any of these things at one time or another. We all favor instant gratification over long-term goals. Instant gratification means that we prefer to enjoy something now or in the present. This is also called present bias or tendency to choose to enjoy the present over the future. If you turn to page 10 in the participant guide, what can I do to reduce my um, present bias? Let's take a look at some strategy. Knowing how much you'll need to retirement is a great first step to take. Now let's look at how you can create a plan to reach these goals. Once you have explored several options and identified the best strategy for you, it's time to put your plan in action. So setting those goals. And the first, setting a goal is a first step towards becoming financially secured in your golden years. We've already taken that first step at this workshop, but you also want to review it when you get home. Even if you think about a goal, maybe difficult to reach, making a plan is a good sign. The more you think about a plan in the future, the easier it becomes to overcome short-term gains and present bias. Select the action and the plan um, to take or have already taken. You need to know what there's two main ways you can build a retirement income through savings and through investing. Think about your future and select a plan that will help you achieve your financial goal. Select from the actions or your plans to um, or take and have already taken. Implement and maintain that plan. One way to commit yourself to a retirement plan is to set a schedule or automatic deposits into retirement accounts or plans. Make your money work for you over the long term by putting it away for right on a regular basis. It's also important to know that once you get started on a retirement saving and investing program, 
it's not to it's just not to set it and forget it um, type of uh, proposition. Your saving invest investment needs to be continually managed over time and ensure that you're managing your risk and return levels you need to secure for retirement. Review their retirement account and savings annually and put it in place effectively, com com combination given where you are in life. Select from the action and the plan that you've already taken. And then always reflect. Reflection can always be a powerful motivator. Imagine who you want to be in the future and visualize what kind of life you'd be like to be living. This simple action may help you build a healthier financial habits in the short term. It's important to develop and implement a strategy and plan stable and secure retirement. So hopefully you'll have a little bit more understanding of the tools to develop an effective retirement savings plan. Remember that the earlier you start saving, the better. Also remember that you're not alone in your venture. Retirement plans and savings can help you grow your um, money. There's also professional and organizations that will help you invest your money effectively and help you provide a, a financially secured investment. Once you have a retirement plan effectively in place, you can start looking forward to those the rest and relaxation. A few years ago, just as someone that may not feel comfortable going to a financial advisor because they, you know, um, you you've either may have heard stories, don't want to, you know, don't want to go down that route. There's actually plans out there that grow with you that it starts on the riskier side. And as you get older, it becomes that low risk. So it kind of goes with your age. Um, you pick the age you figure you're gonna retire in. Um, you know, if you're gonna retire in 2045, um, that's the year you pick and it, it, it grows with you. And then it'll, it'll slowly diversify as you get older, which is kind of a neat plan it pretty much can run itself. But if you have a financial planner, that financial planner should be asking you for an annual meeting every year. What's changed in your life? You may have gotten married, you have a child or all those things can change as um, you know, as we get a little bit older. So that's what a financial planner should do for you um, in the long run. Any questions? No. <laughs> Now I'm gonna have, I'm gonna go back and watch this again though because a lot of information. Yeah, and um, too, if you know, we do have a financial planner at Reliant that you know okay. is free to meet with them. If you know, if you so choose to, you know, just ask those questions, like you know, okay. what type of retirement plan you have, um, and you know, have questions about. You know, I always I, I always tell the kids even in high school. You know, if you get a 401k plan, even the match plan, you don't know how to, because who don't, I don't know how to do it. That's why I use a financial planner. I can tell you how to get a savings account and a checking account, but I can't tell you how to invest your money because that's not my expertise. But, um, you know, that's where you got to rely on that other, that other person that, okay. so and everyone will be different. Yours will be different than I. So, yeah. Right. So. All right. Well, I appreciate you um, attending. And then, if um, like I said, if you have any other questions, I assume you might be in from the Macedon area. Yes. So you know where our location is in Macedon. Actually, I don't. Oh, we're right, almost right across the. We're um, right in behind Ben Wardle Chevy. Oh, okay. So stop right. in. Okay. All right. All Thank right. you so much. I really You're appreciate welcome. your time. Uh -huh. All right. Have a wonderful day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I don't know if we can leave without her. I don't know. <laughs>